Every year we see a couple species become much more popular than they were the year before. So what are the five reptiles that are gonna surge in popularity in 2021? Today, let's discuss it. My name's Adam, this is Diamond, you're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. As always, all five of these reptiles are going to be good reptiles to have as pets, but that kind of qualifies them to be part of the list anyway. We're talking about reptiles that aren't popular right now, but are going to be in the coming year. So let's just get into it. Number five, Antaresia. Now, if you're asking what the heck is an Antaresia, I get it. These guys are spotted pythons, children's pythons, and Stinson's pythons, and pygmy pythons, or anil pythons, whatever you want to call them. And the reason that I say Antaresia and group them all together is because they're so similar. If I handed you a children's python or a spotted python, they're going to act almost the same and have basically the same care requirements, very few differences. I personally have a spotted python. This is Jimmy. He's doing really, really well, and they grow up to be kind of small, a little bit smaller than a ball python. We're talking about four feet, something like that. If you get a pygmy python, they're gonna be a little bit smaller and uh, they're actually the smallest python in the entire world. And if you get a spotted python, which is what I have, a little bit bigger, but they're the bigger of the Antaresia species. Children's pythons seem to be the most common and there are a few morphs that you can get, but why are they so cool and why are they gonna surge in popularity? Well. They're really awesome. They're very similar to ball pythons, which we all know are very popular today and have been for decades. They're not expensive to keep. They eat really well. They're not expensive to house. You could easily keep one in something that was only three foot by two foot. I suggest a four by two by two because they are semi-arboreal, which means that they're gonna use some height if you give it to them. And I personally like this because if you give an animal height and they use it, that means your eye has a little bit more to look at and the furnishings that you use for this enclosure can be a little bit more elaborate. This might be a good thing or bad thing, up to you. And I know that we've seen that some male ball pythons exhibit some semi-arboreal-ness, if this makes sense. But in Antaresia, any of the family are legitimately semi-arboreal, and I think that's super cool, and something that is as easy, in my opinion, actually easier than a ball python, almost as easy as a corn snake that exhibits python-like characteristics, and looks as cool as this, has to be at the top of this list. Well, technically the bottom, but they're cool. They're cool. And not only they're super easy to care for, they're super tame, very docile to handle. As they get bigger, it's a little bit easier because they're less fragile, but that's the nice thing, is that they're big enough to be impressive, but they're not super fragile, so you don't have to worry about breaking this thing in two. You can hand it to a kid and not having to worry about the kid or the animal getting injured for the most part. Still supervise your kids with animals always. And lastly, they're not expensive to house and they're not expensive to buy. So there's no barrier to entry. They're going to be a little bit more expensive than say a normal ball python. I keep going back to the well for this type of comparison because I think that's the perfect comparison. We're talking about something that's going to surge in popularity compared to something similar, which already has been very popular. Number four, and one I think we can all agree is super underrated, false chameleons or bearded anoles, which is actually a better name because they are not in the chameleon family at all. They don't have that kind of like pinchy thing going on with their hands, but they do have these eyes that can kind of look in different directions. So I think that they look similar to a chameleon and chameleons are popular, but they're not very hardy. Where bearded anoles or false chameleons, they are. So I think that's why they're a better fit for most people. They're hardy, they're arboreal, just like a chameleon, they're not gonna ha exhibit some of the characteristics that make chameleons amazing. That flicky tongue, they don't have that. In fact, they eat snails. That's kind of what their specialty is, is they've got very strong jaws that snip on snails. Snip on snails. That's gotta be on a t-shirt. And they stay small, but they're big enough that they can still be handled with confidence. And this is important, I think, for most people because you wanna be able to handle most animals. The most popular animals that are out there can be handled. Ball pythons, corn snakes, you get the idea. 
Say ball python one more time, I dare you. And again, not expensive to house, not expensive to keep, not expensive to buy. They're gonna eat, well, mostly an insectivorous diet. I'm just gonna pretend that's a real word. They're gonna eat an insect diet mostly, they're insectivores, and they can be housed in something you can buy off a shelf at any pet store, an exoterra or zoo bed enclosure. Uh, I've got a bunch of these exoterras. I think they'd be right at home in something like a 36 by 18 by 18, something like that. You could even probably go 18 by 18 by 24, but it just, I think that's what I said to begin with. My opinion, 24 by 24 by 18 would be perfect is what I'm trying to say here. And they look super cool. So even if you had this as like a display, you had like a big uh, display enclosure, maybe it's planted, it's bioactive. They do really well in bioactive setups with real plants. This could be something that is a focal point in your office or your room or your living room or wherever you want to put it. And you can actually take them out and handle them. And you're gonna start seeing a lot more captive breeding. I know that we all seen snake discovery, right? They, they breed these guys. And I think that because of channels like that, where they're getting a lot of attention and there's a lot more captive breeding going on, you're gonna see their stock rise. I think that you're gonna see them become very popular in 2021 and hopefully like everybody and their mother stops buying chameleons because that's more of an expert level in my opinion, animal where a bearded and old false chameleon could probably be kept by an, uh, an intermediate would be my guess. That's probably where I'd put these guys or even some beginners if you really do your homework. False chameleons are pretty wicked. Number three is gonna be a two for, it's gonna be a tie. Rosie boas and dual rose boas. And I know last week, every, you talk about dual rose boas way too much. Mange ma poussière, like give me a break. I understand, I talk about them a lot, but there's a reason. They're amazing. And rosy boas, the reason I put them together is because do you want something that is bigger or something that is smaller? Doom rolls boas are gonna get to like six or seven feet a lot of the time, where a rosy boa is gonna stay at three feet. So I think that it really depends what you want, but they're both going to rise in popularity, especially doom rolls boas, because they are unappreciated and unknown for the most part. I've been into reptiles since well, for as long as I've been alive, basically, my favorite shows when I was a kid was all about reptiles, right? Kratz creatures and Steve Irwin and every, I never heard about Dumbrose Boas at all until I was into my 20s. So I think that these guys, they're gonna become much more popular. You see guys like Chuck Royal in Canada breeding these guys or Jason's Exotic Reptiles in the States breeding these guys. And I think that you're gonna see a lot more, this guy included, start breeding projects because they're a great ground boa. So they're not semi-arboreal where with a red tail boa, let's say, maybe an eight or 10 foot animal, you're gonna need a pretty big enclosure because they're gonna need a little bit of that height. Where with Dumro's boas, they don't need that that height. So you still need something big and wide and long, but you don't need the height like you would with a red tail or just a BCI. Either way, I think it's a great alternative. Now, rosy boas, these guys, they're going to be, well, very interesting because they are a small North American boa species. And what these guys both have in common is they're very tame. They're very fun to handle. Dumbrose boas for sure might be a little bit sketchy to handle if you're like a child alone, but a uh, rosy bow, you wouldn't have that issue. But either way, I think one person, a full-size mature adult could handle either of these without issue at all. And I think both of them are impressive. Obviously, Dumrose boas much more impressive in their size, but rosy boas have more to offer in terms of morphs. You're not gonna find true morphs with Dumrose boas, but you will with rosy boas. So it just depends. Big, small, colorful, all look very similar. It's really up to you. But in my opinion, a great eating snake that is of a size that is not gonna be big enough to harm you, but big enough to be impressive is really awesome. And personally, what I like to see in an animal. Number two, up and coming reptile popular next year, pink tongue skinks. I love pink tongue skinks. And if you're thinking, well, Adam, you don't have one. Are you gonna have one in 2021? Probably, yes. I love my blue tongue skinks. I've got Steve and I've also got Erwin. Yes, for that reason. And these guys are amazing. Don't get me wrong, love them both. Erwin is a fan favorite on this channel, but I think that a pink tongue skink, very similar from the same continent, is going to be a little bit more interesting and manageable to some people. Semi-arboreal, smaller, and have the same diet as a blue tongue. So a blue tongue, in my opinion, you need something like a four by two by two, four by two by one even, because they're not gonna be climbing over anything for the most part. Most of the time, there are exceptions, but pink tongue skinks 
are semi-arboreal. They'll only get to like 18 inches, probably smaller. And uh, well, they have a very cool pattern on them. So I think that they're not only cool to look at, they have that bright pink tongue, but they're gonna be up in the trees, which for a lot of people, myself included, is very interesting. And just like a blue tongue, they can be handled. And I love that. I love animals that I can handle and don't have to worry about, you know, being nippy or hurt me or dropping their tails. They, they can drop their tails, don't grab them by their tails, but they're semi-prehensile, which I think is very cool as well. And a lot of people have been asking, do a video about prehensile tails. If I do, pink tongue skinks will definitely be on the list. And why they're so awesome and gonna rise in popularity of all the things that I just said, but also their diet, which is what makes blue tongue skinks in part so popular because they are basically garbage disposals. You can feed them, you know, premium dog food if you want to. This is, shouldn't be a staple, but just to give you an idea what their guts can handle, they're gonna eat things like mixed vegetables, field greens, bell peppers. You can feed them snails, canned snails. Never go out in your garden, get a snail. You don't know what it's eaten, but canned snails, Zoomed, Nexoterra sell those, for example. You can feed them earthworms. Irwin loves earthworms. You can feed them you get the idea. You can feed them almost anything and there are prepared diets for blue tongue skinks that would work for pink tongue skinks as well. So I just think it's a better option for a lot of people. The price hopefully will start to come because they are pretty expensive, but as they grow in popularity, you're gonna see more people breeding them. They're gonna become more available. <sighs> Can't wait to get a pink tongue. And number one, you've seen me talk about them on the channel before, African house snakes. I love African house snakes. Absolutely amazing. Another one that I'm not a big colubrid guy, but of all the colubrids, this one you'll find in my collection at some point. They come in different morphs. They come in different localities. You can find black ones. You can find albino ones. You can find brown ones. And they always have like this python look about them. They look like little pythons. I remember way back in the day watching a video Brian Barchuk did five or six years ago, and he called them little pythons. And it's kind of funny because everyone I know that I talk to and people, for example, the footage that I got for this video, they all kind of say the same thing. They act like pythons. And not only do they act like pythons, they look like pythons a little bit too in their face. Their size makes them really great as well because they're going to only get, if you get a female, they're bigger, three to four feet maybe, but they're gonna be thin. And males only get to about two feet. So you're gonna be able to feed, for the most part, mice instead of rats their whole life and they will eat very well. And the reason that I say that as like a plus, Mice are cheaper than rats to feed. So you're getting a snake that doesn't cost a lot to buy. They're becoming more popular, so you're gonna see them more available. You can keep them in an enclosure that doesn't cost a ton to buy or set up. For example, if you wanted to buy a Cages custom enclosure, if you wanted to ball out and get a four by two by two, that would be perfect. You could even go way smaller for a male, but there's a perfect cage for the species that is not overly expensive and they're easy to find. And I touched on it before, but they eat great. The big gripe with a lot of people with a lot of snakes, ball pythons included, last time I say ball python, I promise, is that they don't eat. Where with house snakes, they will eat for you. And I think they're very cool because they are, they have the python personality, but they are colubrids after all. So they can be a little bit quick and they move and they're not just gonna sit there like a, like a pet rock basically. So I think it makes a great option for anybody. And I think you're really gonna see their stock rise in 2021. So there you go. Those are the top five reptiles that you're gonna see very popular in 2021 and definitely gain popularity over where they're at now. What do you think? Did I forget something? Do you not agree with something on the list? I got this idea from the Discord server, free to join, just talk about reptiles, link in the description below. And I wanna say thank you so much to the Patreon supporters. You get to see this video early, you know about extra stuff. Whenever I get a pink tongue or an African house snake, you'll know months before everybody else, maybe I've already got them in the collection. Anyway, discounts on the merch. This is Professor Herp merch, but we've got merch too. Get to see videos early, extra content for as little as $1 a month. And a special thank you to Grub Terra, who provides some of the best feeders you could possibly buy. If you live in the US and you want something that is super nutritious for your bearded dragon or leopard gecko or whatever, ship to your door. Grub Terra Black Soldier Fly Larva is the way to go. Great pricing and the shipping is phenomenal. And if you do go buy from Grub Terra, you get 10% off your entire order with code WWR. 
at checkout. And last but certainly not least, we already talked about cages. I love this company. If you want to get yourself a custom cages enclosure, the best on the market that money can buy, you can get yourself free door handles as well. Code WWR at checkout. Use the link below. Let them know I sent you and it doesn't cost you anything extra. And there we go. Ramble too much at the end. As always, Diamond just sitting here, super loyal and probably, yeah, I think he's getting ready to poop. So uh, see you on Monday. Oh yeah, hit subscribe too. Okay, Monday. See you Monday for real.